AMC 2021, problem 15. We had the following four variables A, B, C, D from a given range, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we're trying to find the pos potential values of these so that the two curves will intersect. And we have a following condition for how each case is considered a unique case, but we're going to evaluate that later on in this problem. First of all, how can we say that y is equal to ax squared plus b and y is equal to cx squared plus d? The two of them will intersect. Well, if the two of them are, will intersect, that means that they must intersect at the same point. So that means one of their x and y values must be the same. Therefore, ax squared plus b must be equal to cx squared plus d at some point. Now, given this information, we can simplify to help us get an insight to how we're supposed to do this problem. ax squared minus cx squared is equal to d minus b, because I see like terms x squared. So x squared can be factored out. a minus c is equal to, that's a minus, d minus b. So x squared will be equal to d minus b over a minus c. Now, since we cannot deduce anything else from this fraction, we can stop. From here, we need to evaluate the given information and the given properties of perfect squares. What do we know about perfect squares? We know any perfect square will always be greater than or equal to zero. This is evaluated and reflected within the graph of x squared. So given this information, how do we relate it to this problem? Well, we're told that we're supposed to choose A, B, C, D from this range without replacement. Without replacement means after we choose it, we can no longer choose that option. So therefore, since no value within this set is the same, A squared will never be equal to greater, will never equal zero. So a squared in this case will always be greater than zero. So in this case, x squared will always be greater than zero. Now, when will x squared be greater than zero? Well, that is only the case when the two signs in the denominator and numerator are the same. So positive, positive, and negative, or negative. This is case one, and this is case two. So we can evaluate each case, sum them up, and we will be done. So let's first deal with case one, where both of them are positive. So if both of them are positive, that means d minus b is greater than zero, and a minus c is greater than zero. So therefore, D is greater than B, and A is greater than C. So how do we use this information to help us solve anything further? And to do so, I'm going to uh, clear some room here. So to evaluate this even further, what we need to do is we need to consider how we choose D and B. Well, to choose D and B, we can do combination of 6 pick 2 multiplied by the combination of 4 pick 2. So what this means, 6 pick 2 is for D and B. If we select any two values from the set, it is guaranteed that one will be greater than the other, since there's no replacement. Now, what we choose, that's the greater one we assign to B, and what's less, we assign to B. Now, after we choose two values at random, we will have four values left. And of the four values, we want to choose two to assign for A and C. And whichever one is bigger, we give to A, or in whichever one is smaller, we give to C. So this will consider the case for case one. Multiply them out, and we will get case 1's probability. So that's 6 times 5 over 2 times 4 times 3 over 2. 2 times 2 is 4. You eliminate with 4. 3 times 5 is 15 times 6 is 90. So for case 1, we have 90 terms. But now that we have 90 terms for case 1, let's consider case 2. Now, case 2 is negative and negative. Now, since negative and negative can be, can be explained by the same logic as how we did it for case 1, case 2 will also have 90 possibilities. So we can sum them up and get 180, but that is wrong. Why is it wrong? Because we're given the criteria of how each selection is unique. If A, B, C, D all contain the same values, just reassign in its assignment, that is still considered one choice. So because we have symmetry in case one and case two, that means everything that can be re reflected in C1 can be reflected in C2. So that means that all the possibilities for case one will not be a unique combination for case 2 because of the given criteria. So therefore, we do not sum case 2 with 90 because all the possible 90 combinations are within case 1's combinations. Therefore, our answer choice is C and not D.